Hello and welcome to My Security TV. My name is Chris Cubbage and we're here at Ostert 2012, an information security conference on the Gold Coast. We're here with Mark Seward, the Senior Director for Security and Compliance Marketing for Splunk. Mark, thanks very much thanks. for joining me. Good, Good on you. Mark, maybe just go through Splunk. It's, uh, you know, it's a, catchy, a catchy brand, but I think maybe just explain exactly what Splunk is about and, and the point of difference uh, in terms of IT security services. Sure, sure. Splunk is is uh, is very interesting. An interesting name too, because spelunking in the United States means to go cave diving. I assume it means the same thing here. Yes. Splunk means to go data diving. Gotcha. In fact, there were two gentlemen who were looking at a, a large Java stack trace error, and it was hundreds of lines long. And one of them said to the other, "Why can't we just Google that error and find what we're looking for?" And an idea was born back in 2005. Uh, that spiraled into now a product that has over 3,700 customers uh, and about half of the Fortune 500. And I was going to say that the trends that you see in the industry and, and specifically what, what exactly are, are driving um, uh, people back to Splunk? Uh, right. Splunk is, is at its heart a big data analytics engine. And big data is really defined by more data that you can put into a traditional database of any kind. And the data that you're surrounded by um, and the data you create as you go through your daily life is getting larger and larger over time. So what we look at when we look at Splunk is the ability to take any kind of data from anywhere and put it inside of a product that lets you run analytical analysis on the data directly. So we take in data in any kind of format, whether it's XML, Java stack traces, syslog, anything you can think of, as long as it's text-based, and put it into the product it's indexed, just like Google indexes uh, websites. So it's indexed, and then you can run your analytics on the data to find out how often a particular condition occurs, or you can actually look at the human-to-machine to behaviors and the machine-to-machine -machine behaviors across your entire enterprise. So as we look at the kinds of threats that are now out there for security, what we see is that you know, it used to be your intrusion detection systems and your antivirus systems, your firewalls, were catching a lot of the kinds of security incidents uh, that people were seeing. Now, though, a lot of the security incidents we're seeing are based on uh, normal data. In other words, I would get your credentials and all of your activities would look normal because you would log into an email server, you would uh, get an IP address, you would surf the web, use DNS, maybe a, maybe a VPN, all of that. Uh, and those are all normal activities. Splunk allows you to take a look at the normal activities and look for abnormal types of behaviors, uh, which is sort of where the newest threats lie. And are you able to alarm those uh, behaviors the, when, when an anomaly is picked up in almost real time? Absolutely. And, and the integration with other systems, even for physical systems, you know, once uh, an IT uh, alarm has been activated, what, what kind of events can organizations put in place? So uh, it all depends on, on your search of the data. And searches are automated, and we have 150 commands, far beyond any sort of Boolean commands, that you can run against your data. So if I wanted to know who's using someone else's credentials in my organization, who is, who's perhaps stolen some credentials, what I would do is I would bring together my Active Directory logs, maybe my physical badge access logs, and my VPN logs. And I would, I would write a search that says, if I see an Active Directory login without a badge access, physical access, or without a VPN access, remote access, alarm and let me know. Because that would be certainly some way that I could infer that you were using someone else's credentials in the organization, which would be a, a policy violation for my organization and perhaps even uh, malware trying to use your credentials to do something. I think that's a real, um, you know, the industry is generally seeing that convergence between the physical and IT. Mm -hmm. and I, this sounds like a, a perfect bridge uh, in order to, you know, match up data access right to physical access on the side or at another site as well. Uh, it brings in CCTV and a whole, whole range of different applications. Right. I, I don't, I don't want to give anyone any ideas, but there are a lot of different security scenarios. I, uh, I, my wife accuses me of going to work every day and thinking like a criminal. Uh, so I put together IT risk scenarios all the time that include uh, a malicious insider that's working at a factory that produces chocolate bars, for example. 
and decides that he's going to go into the facility late at night so you have an access to the facility and then is going to make a change to the HVAC system to turn up the temperature by two or three degrees. Maybe not necessarily something that's noticeable to anyone, but something that could increase spoilage rates, something that could adversely affect the company. So physical security, tying that back to uh, virtual security, tying that back to HVAC systems, all of those kinds of things when brought together really paint a picture of what's really going on inside the organization. Obviously that requires organizations to actually start to think about the scenarios that they're potentially open to. Um, how do you feel that the level of awareness is uh, in terms of maybe, maybe just the Australian market? Right. Um, the Australian market's actually very good and in some ways better than the American market because they're more willing to try new things. Uh, some of the organizations in the Australian market are much more cutting edge than even my back in the States. So there's no, no real problem with getting security folks here to think outside the box, to look at IT risk scenarios and begin to think creatively. And in fact, that's the thing I run into the most, uh, or the most resistance, is that uh, security vendors have treated their customers uh, in a way that uh, has, they've, where they've told the security professional, you don't have to think anymore, we'll do your thinking for you. And I have actually literally gone into security organizations where the security professional says, I want a solution that just tells me what to do. And I, I have to, I just sigh because security is about thinking creatively. And if you can't think creatively, a hacker is going to think creatively and you're going to get compromised. Uh, Mark, what, what are some of the advantages of using a big data uh, solution in terms of uh, managing security? Sure. Um, a lot of the traditional solutions required a database back end, which meant that when you collected your data, it needed to fit a specific format to fit into the database. And I talked to a lot of security professionals who have had to normalize data from their other security solutions to fit into that database. And so when we think about that, and we think about the data that you might have to leave behind because it didn't fit, that's security data and that's value lost from your other solutions that you've already paid good money for. So in essence, your security information and event management system or your log solution is really uh, devaluing other systems that you have. And also predetermining where your security investigation is going to go. So the vendor has said, hey, I only collect these kinds of data, or I only can collect you know, 27 fields of information. Uh, and it's up to you to have to decide in advance what to leave out of a security investigation. So a big data solution is one that can not only take large volumes of data, but one that doesn't restrict you with the kind of data you get into it, and, or, or the amount of data from a particular data source that might be valuable later on. Are you finding that companies can reuse this information for other things as well? Business and their own business intelligence, processes, efficiency, uh, those types of uh, applications? Uh, so let's suppose you wanted to save $100,000 by, as I mentioned before, by changing the temperature of the factory two degrees higher. And you wanted to know what the effect was on whether or not you were going to have to change out hard drives more often in the data center. Uh, and you happen to know the three things that happen before a hard drive fails. And you put those three things into Splunk and you watch proactively to see what's going to happen so you can prevent that from happening. And you also watch to see whether or not performance is impacted by your temperature uh, rise in the data center. Because obviously if you're, you raise the temperature in the data center, you're saving air conditioning costs. And if there's no corresponding uh, 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 defect on the hard drives, then, then you've saved yourself a lot of money. Uh, conversely, of course, if there is, and you begin to see your IT team have to go in and rescue systems, you know you can't really save that $100,000 you've been thinking about. So you can put together these kinds of scenarios, try them out for yourself. Uh, hard drives happen to be pretty cheap. So you can actually figure these things out for yourself. What are Splunk's main client profiles? Is it large enterprises or are you also able to help small to business enterprises? Splunk is sold based on the amount of data you put into it. So we have a free download model uh, where you can download Splunk for free and try it out. And you can put up to 500 megabytes of data into it. And then incrementally above that, we ask you to pay for a license. So we have licenses at 
500 megabytes, uh, one gigabyte, two gigabyte, five gigabyte, 10 gigabyte, all the way up to customers who are indexing close to 20 terabytes of data per day. Great, thanks Mark, really appreciate it. Thank you, cheers. Thank you.